Researchers from Australia took blood samples of 29 children, both before and after COVID-19 vaccination. They wanted to see if the vaccine might have other beneficial side effects. Why would they expect that or do that? Well, because vaccines can trigger an immune response in your body that can help fight off additional viruses or bacteria, not just the one specific disease you were vaccinated for. Think of it as your body's defense mechanisms getting wiser. It can happen with natural infections too. And the scientists behind this paper noticed that nobody looked for this effect in COVID-19 vaccines for children. But when they ran the experiment, what they found was exactly the opposite of what they expected. Instead of seeing an improvement, they saw a reduced immune response toward other viruses, fungi, and bacteria. This was a big surprise for them, but not a big surprise to the doctors that have been speaking out about mRNA vaccine safety, because they already have a name for this. They call it VAIDS, Vaccine Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Welcome to Frontline Health. I'm Dan Skorback. Here's the recent paper that was published in Frontiers of Immunology. The researchers are from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute and Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. The scientists took blood samples of 29 children before vaccination and after vaccination, specifically after two doses of Pfizer mRNA vaccine. First, they measured the immune responses to COVID-19, and those results looked good after vaccination. The vaccine was doing its intended job, and the immune system was responding against the spike protein. And because the immune system was active, they expected to see another immune phenomenon kick in, which is called heterologous immunity. Immunity that's acquired through vaccination or infection that will also work on completely different pathogens. For example, in the 1940s, children who got a tuberculosis vaccine early in their life were associated with decreased mortality from other unrelated infections. So the scientists of this paper expected that the fully vaccinated children would get good protection from COVID and at the same time get an activated immune system that would help fight off other infections. But when it comes to this broader protection, they found the opposite. Look at the results. In all 29 kids, the immune response went down for all of these pathogens. You can see that E. coli is up there, hepatitis B, and even tuberculosis. Turns out this heterologous immunity is a double-edged sword. It can go in a good direction or in a bad direction. Scientists have observed for a long time that some vaccines or a combination of them can actually throw a child's developing immune system into disbalance and make them more susceptible to inflammatory disorders like eczema or asthma. So in the case of the pediatric COVID vaccines, these findings should raise a red flag. And considering that a flu season is right around the corner, an immune system that's out of balance is probably not what parents want for their child to have. The authors of this paper wrote, this is particularly relevant in children as they have extensive exposure to microbes at daycare, school, and social occasions. Professor Ratsa Flevai, who specializes in risk management and health systems at MIT, posted that the study adds to cumulative evidence suggesting adverse immune alterations by COVID-19 vaccination, meaning things aren't working as they should. Family physician Dr. Said Haider and immunologist and computational biologist Jessica Rose both connected the study's findings to VAIDS. VAIDS means Vaccine Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It is a new colloquial term coined by researchers and health practitioners since the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Though not recognized as a medical condition, some experts believe the COVID-19 vaccines may impair or suppress immune response. Which is exactly what the study showed. Dr. Andrew Bostom, who's a retired professor of medicine at Brown University, told the Epoch Times that repeat mRNA vaccine injections could predispose children to both viral and bacterial infections. And while some immunologists tried to discredit the findings of this study on Twitter, there are too many of these types of studies popping up, and this lowered immunity issue is becoming very hard to ignore. For example, here's a study that found similar results in adults. Here's one the Epoch Times reported on in January where the scientists found that boosted individuals have increased IgG subclass 4 antibodies, which are less effective than other subtypes of IgG antibodies. And that's a bad for you in the long term, especially if you encounter a real virus later. Research out of the Cleveland Clinic has also shown that vaccinated people are at a higher risk of infection than unvaccinated people who survived a prior infection. This paper, which is now peer-reviewed, 
also showed that with every extra booster, the chance of COVID infection increased. And this paper, this paper over here, argues that innate immune suppression after a COVID vaccine may present individuals with a vulnerability to cancer, neurological diseases, and other infectious diseases. And that's something we have seen. Since the COVID-19 vaccine rollouts, doctors have been reporting an increase in cancers in people under 50, with some experts suggesting vaccine triggers. And this study suggests that it could be a multi-generational problem. When these mice were given two doses of lipid nanoparticles, the same as the one given to humans, the mice had a more persistent suppressed immune response. Even the mice's offspring also inherited some of the immune suppression. And with the new flu season right around the corner, many people are still on the fence about whether to get another COVID vaccine for themselves or their children. So please share this video with them. That way they can make an informed decision. This is Frontline Health. I'm Dan Skorback. Stay healthy, America. Last week, we published an episode of Facts Matter right here on Epic TV, detailing how, according to data which came out of the CDC itself, it appears that people who received the vaccine were more likely to be hospitalized for COVID than those who did not receive the vaccine meaning that the vaccine efficacy had turned negative, at least in terms of hospitalizations. Now, that data was presented by the CDC as a part of their presentation to FDA officials just earlier this month. But it was presented just sort of as a matter of fact. The official who was making the presentation, he showed the numbers, including the fact that people who took the shots were 8% more likely to be hospitalized, and that was it. They did not even attempt to answer why that might be happening. And so we here at the Epic Times, we took the advice of the mainstream media in order to follow the science. And what we found was a possible reason for why the vaccine efficacy had turned negative. You see, this paper right here was published in the Vaccines Medical Journal just last month. And this was a study that was conducted by an international team of scientists, including ones from Florida, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Mexico, as well as Canada. And what these researchers determined was that repeated COVID vaccinations actually weaken the immune system and potentially makes people more susceptible to life-threatening conditions such as cancer, which obviously is a finding that goes in direct opposition to the CDC and FDA recommendations as they currently stand. Now, according to the study, the mechanism by which this immune system weakening occurs is that when a person takes multiple doses of either the Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna vaccine, this leads them to have higher levels of a specific subclass of antibodies called IgG4, which stands for immunoglobulin subclass 4. Now, on the one hand, that's a good thing because having antibodies can provide a person with some level of protection. However, on the other hand, there's a growing body of evidence showing that that particular subclass of antibody is actually quite dangerous because of its inflammatory functions. And in order to explain why exactly that is, let's take a quick biology refresher, just in case many of you have not been inside of a biology class in the last 30 years. Here's a very simplified version of how the immune response works. If at some point your body encounters some type of an antigen in the bloodstream or in the tissues of the body, something like, for instance, let's say the spike protein, one of your antigen presenting cells or your APCs, they will connect with the antigen and then they'll move on over and interact with one of your T cells. That T cell will then turn around and interact with one of your B cells and it'll have that B cell create antibodies against that particular antigen. This is just the normal way that our immune system works, regardless of whether the initial antigen came from a vaccine or just from somewhere in the environment. Now, when that antibody is made, it can be categorized into five different types. You have IgA, IgM, IgD, IgE, as well as IgG, with each one of these having their own unique functions. IgG is the one that's most relevant to our discussion since it's the IgG antibodies which help protect humans from viral and bacterial infections. However, these IgG antibodies, when they're made, they can be categorized into four different subclasses. Usually, which subclass they belong to is determined by the hinge joint in the physical structure. And so you have IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, and IgG4. Now, in today's discussion, we are most concerned with IgG4. That's because IgG4 is typically produced when the human body is continually exposed to some type of an antigen. And this is what the researchers discovered was happening as a result of the vaccines. And the reason that this really matters is because of something known as IgG4-related disease. 
This is a type of chronic inflammatory condition that causes constant inflammation within the body. And if it's left untreated, IgG4 related disease can lead to things like organ dysfunction, organ failure, or even death. Furthermore, IgG4 related disease can affect almost every one of the organs within the body. It's not just localized to one part. And because of the nature of IgG4 related disease, a person might have it for many years without ever realizing what's happening. Here's, for instance, what the American College of Rheumatology wrote on the matter over on their website. Quote, many patients with IgG4 related disease may have no signs or symptoms for months or even years before the diagnosis is made which can cause organ damage even while the patient is feeling well long before he or she comes to medical attention. Because of the many organs that IgG4-related disease can affect, the disease can exist in multiple ways associated with many symptoms. IgG4-related disease can often appear as a mass that mimics cancer. Other common symptoms include fatigue, weight loss, headaches, dysfunction of the cranial nerves, bulging of one or both eyes, bulges on the sides of the face or below the chin, inflammatory tissue in the thyroid, large vessel vasculitis, which is inflammation in the blood vessel walls, shortness of breath, blockage of urine flow from the kidneys, enlarged kidneys, abdominal pain, and painless jaundice, which is a yellow tint to the skin or to the eyes. Furthermore, because it can manifest in so many different ways, and because IgG4-related disease is a fairly new discovery, doctors are only now beginning to recognize that many of the symptoms that they're seeing in their patients are not the diseases that they thought there were, but rather they might actually be symptoms of IgG4-related disease. Here's, for instance, a short excerpt from a medical lecture that was given by An Dr. Andrew Lee, who is a neuro-ophthalmologist who posts some of his lessons over on YouTube. And the reason it's important to us clinically is IgG4-related disease. A lot of diseases that we called idiopathic in the past are now turning out to be IgG4. And so for neuro-ophthalmology, that is idiopathic orbital inflammatory syndrome or orbital inflammatory pseudotumor. So when we see a patient who has proptosis and pain, ophthalmoplegia, and their imaging study shows an inflammatory lesion in the orbit, even though that could be idiopathic orbital inflammatory syndrome, we still have to worry about IgG4. And the only way to make the determination ultimately is with pathology. Because we cannot see the IgG4, we have to use special immunohistochemical stains to identify that IgG subclass 4 is present in that specimen. Now, if you'd like to see that full lecture, I'll throw a link to it down in the description box below. However, circling back to our main topic, the researchers behind this paper, they cited many experiments which showed a link between both COVID as well as the vaccines to a spike in IgG4 antibodies. For instance, they cited multiple experiments that were performed on mice, which found that for one, receiving multiple booster shots on top of the original COVID vaccination significantly decreased protection against both the Delta and Omicron variants. And also, testing within the laboratory discovered a spike in IgG4 levels after repeated Pfizer vaccination. Furthermore, there have been other studies which detected higher levels of IgG4 in people who died while having COVID-19 compared to those who recovered from COVID-19, meaning that there is likely a connection between COVID, the vaccine, and the mass production of these IgG4 antibodies, which causes inflammation in organs throughout the body. And according to the researchers, it's exactly this mechanism of a weakened immune system brought about by repeated vaccinations that could lead to serious problems, including things like cancer. Here's specifically what this paper wrote, quote, Increased IgG4 synthesis due to repeated mRNA vaccination with high antigen concentrations may also cause autoimmune diseases and promote cancer growth and autoimmune myocarditis in susceptible individuals. They then go on to explain how one potential long-term consequence of these repeated vaccinations is having a vaccinated individual who gets immunocompromised get infected with COVID and potentially because he's immunocompromised because of the vaccinations, he actually suffers a more severe illness which is ironically the exact opposite of what the CDC says happens. Here's specifically what these researchers wrote, quote, without an adequate protection level, even the new Omicron subvariants, considered as mild, could cause severe multi-organ damage and death in immunocompromised individuals and those with comorbidities. And indeed, it's not just this one study that came to this type of a conclusion. Multiple other studies have pegged the vaccinated as having a higher risk of infection when compared to those who have natural immunity. 
as well as this one study here that was published back in April, which found that each additional dose of the vaccine raised the risk of infection, which is something very similar to what an internal study within the Cleveland Clinic's 50,000 employees found as well. Although I will mention that in the Cleveland Clinic study, they found that the more shots a person received, the more likely they were to catch COVID, but those researchers, they made a point to say that it's not clear whether there was an actual causal relationship or whether there was something happening behind the scenes which was causing the correlation. But the fact is that the correlation is there and more and more studies are beginning to bring it to light. With this latest study, the one that we've been discussing thus far, well, giving an actual possible reason for why this is so, IgG4 related disease, the disease that you develop and not even know that you have for many years. And it can be caused potentially by receiving consistent COVID vaccinations. Now, this paper concludes by saying that repeated vaccination, quote, should be approached with caution. And indeed, that appears to be what's happening, which might be a tacit acknowledgement from all these different health agencies across the world that the approach of never ending booster shots is just not working. For instance, after years of promoting repeated shots, some countries just recently either stopped or slowed down the recommendations for COVID vaccination. We here at the Epoch Times, we actually had an opportunity to speak with Dr. Robert Malone. He is a, you can say, vaccine pioneer, and he actually holds several of the patents for the mRNA technology, the mRNA technology platform that's now being utilized by companies like Pfizer and Moderna to create these vaccines. And we asked him about this IgG4 antibody discovery that was detailed in the study, and here's what he told us, quote, I warned that more jabs can result in what's called high zone tolerance, of which the switch to IgG4 is one of the mechanisms. And now we have data that clearly demonstrates that's occurring in the case of this, as well as some other vaccines. So it's basically validating that this rush to administer and readminister without having solid data to back those decisions was highly counterproductive and appears to have resulted in a cohort of people that are actually more susceptible to the disease. The tolerance stemming from heightened levels of IgG4 means the immune system lacks the ability to respond to antigens or foreign substances. Meaning, in plain English, that because people received one vaccine after another, after another, after another, after another, they assumed that all that supposed protection was being stacked one on top of the other. But instead, what appears to have been happening is because the antigen was just continually being present in the body, the body switched to producing the IgG4 antibody as a response. And that led to the kinds of problems that we've been discussing in today's episode. And so there you have it. One of the possible mechanisms for why more vaccinations actually lead to a negative efficacy result. If you'd like to read through the main study that we went through in today's episode, I'll throw the PDF version of it down into the description box below this video for you to peruse at your own leisure. I'll actually throw some more resources regarding this IgG4 related disease so that you can learn more about that if you'd like to as well. I'll throw that into the description box down there too. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epoch Times. Stay informed and most importantly, Stay free.